India and South Africa share close relationship, in fact a very historic relationship as well. With me is the South African Foreign Minister to talk about this relationship and many things. Uh, Ma'am, welcome to Vion. Namaste to you and my first question, obvious question to you is that we are fresh out of the G20 Foreign Minister's meeting. We saw the chair statement and the outcome documents. How do you see the Indian presidency of this mega grouping? Well, uh, good morning and thank you for the opportunity. I think that uh, India chairing G20 is an important moment for countries of the South because uh, essentially the leadership of, it was Indonesia, now India, uh, indicates that the South is able to lead global uh, institutions and to shape the character of global affairs. So for us, uh, the chairing by India is really an opportunity for developing countries to set the issues of the developing world on the agenda of the world stage. Mm -hmm. And I think India has done so very, very well in the theme that it has chosen and in the manner in which the uh, presidency has conducted the G20 affairs up to now. Mm -hmm. Ma'am, but the meeting happens at a time when the conflict in Europe is raging, the Russia-Ukraine conflict. Do you think that that dominated the meeting, the foreign minister's meeting, because uh, we could not get the joint statement, the consensus on two paragraphs was lacking? Well, I think the matter of Russia and Ukraine um, is an emotive uh, issue for a number of the more powerful uh, G20 countries and we are concerned that uh, this particular uh, you know terrible development is detracting from the core purpose of the G20 but I must congratulate India for its maturity and for its ability to keep a focus on the core issues I thought that the statement that the chairperson eventually unveiled really contained the large set of issues especially development priorities which we do require uh, to be placed on the uh, global stage. So I don't believe um, that India lacks the leadership capability mm -hmm. to ensure that the core development issues are not neglected. Mm -hmm. How do you essentially see uh, the, the uh, Indian uh, side chairing the grouping? In fact, what's your expectations when it comes to India chairing uh, the grouping of uh, the 20 most powerful economies? I'm hoping um, that the core purpose for which the G20 was established um, will be uh, uh, returned to focus. Uh, we have lost traction. The G20 is not the United Nations. Mm. It's a grouping of developed and developing countries which come together in order to share perspectives on how we improve mm -hmm. the character of the world, mm -hmm. how we improve the livelihood of the most marginalized, mm -hmm. and which issues we take up mm -hmm. as the core focal issues as this uh, gathering of very powerful countries. We have the largest populations. We have the biggest uh, economies of emerging and developed markets. So I'm, I'm hoping that India will insist uh, that the G20 has a purpose mm -hmm. and it must maintain that purpose mm -hmm. and not be detracted by one issue um, that the Western world is involved in. Mm -hmm. You said a very important line, not be distracted by that one issue. But does that issue have the potential to divide the grouping? And was South Africa on board the consensus mm -hmm. essentially that was derived at the foreign minister's meeting? Indeed, we were. We support the chair's statement. Uh, we thought the inclusion of the two paragraphs uh, would be uh, satisfactory. It was disappointing uh, that they were rejected. Uh, we are worried mm, about the Ukraine-Russia war, uh, but of course uh, we do believe, uh, as I an African, I know there are many conflicts in Africa mm -hmm. that are totally ignored at the moment. Mm -hmm. It's as though there's only one part of the world where there's a conflict. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is disturbing because as we said in our comments during uh, the meeting, if we are worried about war and peace, it must be a worry for all humanity and not a part of humanity. Mm -hmm. 
And uh, I think uh, what we really need to be careful about is distracting mm -hmm. uh, the G20. Mm -hmm. um, I believe that India is correct in its view, which we share, mm -hmm. that we should exhaust all manner of diplomacy mm -hmm. in order to have a peaceful uh, settlement between Russia and Ukraine. Mm -hmm. And I think insufficient effort mm -hmm. is being devoted to seeking peace. Ma'am, you have multiple times referred to the conflict in Europe. <coughs> uh, what's your government stance, your country's stance uh, when it comes to the ongoing conflict, uh, if you can elaborate on that? Well, when you introduced our discussion, you mentioned the historic relationship between India and South Africa. You know that uh, the people of India and successive governments supported our struggle for freedom against apartheid. Mm -hmm. And we settled that struggle by negotiation eventually. Mm -hmm. We sat down with persons who were essentially our enemies, mm -hmm. who killed and arrested our fathers and mothers who denied us educational opportunity, who denied us basic human rights. But in the end, encouraged by the world, we sat down mm -hmm. and negotiated a settlement. Mm -hmm. So we have appropriated as a constitutional value mm -hmm. the settlement of disputes by negotiation. Mm -hmm. So our call on Russia and Ukraine is let us use diplomacy and on the world we are saying the United Nations should be allowed to lead a process mm -hmm. of diplomacy. We are worried mm -hmm. that the United Nations has been marginalized mm -hmm. uh, in this uh, current uh, conflict. Mm -hmm. And we seriously believe that the Secretary General needs to play a leading role mm -hmm. because the UN is the global body of all of us, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, it is not being given the place to play that role of leadership mm -hmm. in seeking peace. So our own uh, aspect as South Africa mm -hmm. is we believe the two countries must sit down around a table and peacefully negotiate an outcome. Mm -hmm. Similar sentiments by New Delhi. We saw the Indian Prime Minister saying that this is not an era of war. How do you see India playing the role when it comes to resolving the conflict? Well, I think uh, that we're looking forward to India, uh, Brazil, South Africa, and China playing uh, a leading role in drawing the parties together because one of our members is Russia as BRICS. Mm -hmm. And we think that four uh, leaders actually have a very vital role that they could play mm -hmm. in becoming a convening group to draw the parties together. So I think uh, our leaders, uh, Prime Minister Modi, uh, President Xi, uh, President Ramaphosa, mm -hmm. and President Lula, uh, we need to see them uh, coming together and really assuming a very critical leadership role at this time, mm -hmm. because I believe leadership is missing. Mm -hmm. uh, and you need this kind uh, of charismatic leadership that is devoted to peace. Mm -hmm. Ma'am, uh, while this conflict rages on, there were the exercises between South Africa, Russia and China. And this has been a global headline. Many have criticized as well. What's your view as to why these three countries, in fact, why South Africa participated in with countries, with one country at least, who was or has been party to a conflict that has been raging in Europe? Well, um, we are not at war with Russia. Uh, I think that's important. Uh, it is tragic that there is a conflict, an armed conflict underway in the 21st century. We had hoped after the Second World War we would not see uh, such conflicts. But we are not at war uh, uh, with Russia. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a relationship with Russia and China, with India, with Brazil and many other countries. Mm -hmm. Uh, we had a military uh, drill with uh, the United States mm. uh, in October last year and with other countries mm. uh, in the course of 2021. Nobody raised questions at that time. Mm. Um, we are not providing Russia with arms. We're not participating in any way mm -hmm. uh, in the conflict. We're not providing either side. Uh, we're not involved in the conflict and so to define uh, the military drill, which was a pure naval exercise, mm. as being uh, something 
uh, that participates uh, in an armed conflict, mm. I think is wrong and is just political posturing. Mm. Uh, I know that uh, those who support uh, uh, Ukraine want every other country to take their side on the issue. Mm. We have chosen that we do not take sides. We encourage mm. settlement and negotiation. Mm. We don't wish to become party to the conflict by choosing sides. Mm -hmm. So, ma'am, you mentioned the word though, which we all know what it means. Have you or your country come under pressure when it comes to those countries who have been on the other side of the parties? Because the Russian side, the Russian foreign minister here in Delhi said that the Western countries have been calling countries in the global south and telling them that you will be spared if you vote at the UN for the resolution. Well, uh, certainly we've been called many times. Every time there's a resolution at the UN, uh, you receive phone calls. But we've made it clear uh, that we will abstain until we see a resolution seriously proposing negotiations. Mm -hmm. uh, until we see a resolution that accords with our own perspective mm -hmm. on how we manage and settle disputes, mm -hmm. uh, we are unable uh, to vote in support. Mm -hmm. So we have had phone calls, but uh, you can't be bullied. Mm -hmm. uh, each of us are sovereign nations. Uh, we have our policy perspectives, and we have to uphold those policies. Mm -hmm. Ma'am, now coming to your BRICS chairmanship this year, South Africa is chairing the BRICS grouping. Uh, what are the focus like for your country? And also, is there any plan for expansion of the grouping? Well, with respect to our plan, as you know, South Africa is part of the African continent. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've always in our foreign policy asserted that our duty and task is to enhance the character of Africa. So our theme uh, for the BRICS year is BRICS and Africa. Mm -hmm. We would like to very firmly attach BRICS countries to the African progress. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have suggested that we do that with a focus on sustainable development mm -hmm. as well as on inclusive growth. These are two aspects that Africa has to do much more on. Uh, India has made great progress in development, mm -hmm. great progress in inclusive economic growth. We wish to draw lessons as Africa from uh, that experience. China as well has uh, uh, near eradicated poverty, mm -hmm. which is a huge problem on the continent. Mm -hmm. So this is why we said BRICS and Africa. Mm -hmm. This is the core theme. Sustainable development, which are the UN, mm -hmm. sustainable development goals, and then inclusive growth, because we want our economies to grow and inequality to be reduced. The uh, key priorities out of that are, of course, human resource development, which is skills. Mm -hmm. If you don't have skills, you can't really achieve uh, your development aspirations. And then, you know, we're all experiencing the problem of climate change, mm -hmm. and one of the issues um, that we have said we'll pursue is what we call a just transition mm -hmm. uh, to a cleaner future. So that just transition mm -hmm. means the people go with you. Mm -hmm. So you don't close down coal mines, people have no jobs. Mm -hmm. you, you reduce use of coal, but you introduce people to solar mm -hmm. and other energy uh, resources and they become the new entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. So it's a just movement, just transition. The third element is we must collaborate mm. and prepare for future health emergencies. Mm. We all came out of COVID-19. Mm -hmm. Africa was particularly hard hit. We were the last to get vaccines. Everybody ordered the vaccines, except India. I must say India allowed us to purchase vaccines from India early mm. uh, uh, in, in the uh, pandemic. But many countries kept vaccines away from Africa. So we were last in the queue. Now we've said we must develop the capability to innovate, research, and produce vaccines. Mm -hmm. So we would like uh, research and innovation to be a key priority uh, in our context. Mm -hmm. Then, of course, women's uh, uh, development is very important to us. Mm -hmm. We must have more gender equality, investment in women's financial inclusion. Mm -hmm. So these are the key priority areas. Uh, that we have signaled as part of our BRICS mandate. Mm -hmm. uh, plans for expansion? I'm looking to ah, get more expansion. members. Expansion, that's a big, big debate. As, yeah. uh, as you know, uh, the five countries came together um, as a progressive forum. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of commonality. Mm -hmm. 
uh, India and South Africa experienced colonialism and came out of it. Mm -hmm. uh, Brazil has had uh, experience of you know, fighting for democracy, they had many military coups and so on. Now they are a strong mm -hmm. uh, democratic nation. China has come out of a very difficult period of poverty. And Russia, of course, has had to withstand uh, the Second World War and other experiences. So we come from a history of struggle and have come together to try and shape a common global agenda. Now, when you have people interested in joining your organization, mm -hmm. one of the first questions is, do they reflect mm -hmm. our characteristics and interests? Mm -hmm. So uh, while we are ready to discuss expansion, uh, we believe that it's very important that we shape a set of criteria mm -hmm. that we would utilize to look at the various countries mm -hmm. that are interested. Uh, uh, I think it's a, it's a plus for BRICS mm -hmm. uh, that there are countries that say, we want to join you. And they're actually writing everywhere we go. Mm -hmm. We are asked about this. Uh, so it will be uh, something our leaders will discuss mm -hmm. at the summit in August. And after that, we'll have guidance from them. But how many countries have sent you the I think that um, on my desk, I think I have 12 letters. 12 letters? Um, and I suspect other foreign ministers have had approaches from their own regions, yeah. Uh -huh. Any, any names you yes, like to say? Yes, indeed. Oh, so they've come out publicly. Uh, Saudi Arabia is one. Uh, United Arab Emirates, Egypt, uh, Algeria, Argentina. So it's a growing list. Mexico, um, Nigeria. So there's huge interest mm -hmm. uh, uh, worldwide. Mm -hmm. And uh, once we've shaped the criteria, mm -hmm. we will then make the decision. Mm -hmm. Now coming to the bilateral aspect of the relationship, uh, <coughs> as we started off, historic relationship uh, that continues till date. If you can talk about the relationship, where it goes. And also, yeah, this year is a significant year, 30 years of the establishment of relationship and the Cheetah Pact, which has been on the headlines here in Delhi. If you can talk about that as well. Yes, we were so thrilled uh, that we were able to provide cheetahs uh, to, to India because this is going to revive the cheetah population. Uh, which is an endangered uh, species worldwide. So we were thrilled that we could have this uh, exchange, which enhances uh, sustainability mm -hmm. uh, in the world of our fauna and flora. Mm -hmm. um, we hope we'll have more such exchanges. And I was thrilled uh, to see the story on the front pages mm -hmm. uh, uh, in, in India. Um, we hope uh, we will collaborate even further on preserving our biodiversity and we wish to draw on India's experience, for example, in renewable energy resources, which we are introducing now uh, in South Africa. Our relationship is very expansive uh, with India. It's a trade relationship. I think we could do much more there. We've been talking about that with Minister Jai Shankar. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think as well, uh, the people to people exchange uh, uh, should be broadened, as you know, um, many, uh, uh, persons of Indian origin mm. uh, now live in South Africa. We are the African country with the largest mm. uh, uh, Indian uh, population that originates uh, uh, from India. So it's a very important part of our own being mm. uh, and culture as South Africa. So we want stronger people to people exchange, greater trade links. Uh, and of course, we would like uh, to really draw on sectoral experiences mm. such as digital mm. uh, competence in India, bring more digitalization to South Africa and Africa. Mm. We're also a gateway to the continent, mm. and we'd like India to use that opportunity working closely mm. uh, with South Africa. Mm -hmm. uh, Ma'am, uh, the Indo-Pacific vision is something that has been talk of the town, at least here in Delhi, Washington. More and more countries are being uh, being part of it, coming out with outlook. In fact, the IORA is planning an outlook on the Indo-Pacific. What's South Africa's view on the Indo-Pacific? I believe uh, it's a very important part of the planet. And of course, we shouldn't forget um, that uh, the Indian Ocean and the Pacific Ocean straddle many countries, both developed as well as developing. Mm -hmm. So um, what we would not like to see happen is the Indo-Pacific becoming an area of military supremacy mm -hmm. by some 
and uh, neglecting the development opportunity. We would like, as was proposed by early leaders in India, Mm -hmm. uh, that uh, the Indo-Pacific should be a zone of peace and development. Mm -hmm. This is what we hope for. Uh, Ayora's own focus is one of peace and development. Mm -hmm. And what is wonderful about Ayora is that it includes African mm -hmm. uh, countries that have the Indian Ocean as part of their territorial mm -hmm. uh, uh, waters. So um, I am concerned when I see a uh, discussion about the Indo-Pacific uh, a region that excludes the African continent. Mm -hmm. Because then what essentially people are talking about is a zone of military influence mm -hmm. rather than an ocean of peace and development. Mm -hmm. United Nations Security Council reform, another thing which is close to the Indian government, uh, India, we are the uh, fifth largest economy, soon to be the largest uh, uh, populated country in the, uh, on the planet. Do you see or do you think that the UN today is dysfunctional because of lack of reform? It reflects the world of previous century? Well, I, I would be hesitant to use the term dysfunctional. I think it has many failings and it, they are related to the fact that uh, it tends to still be archaic in that it is the UN that we established after the Second World War and we haven't changed it given uh, the post-colonial era uh, that we are now in. So I do think it's in need of reform, uh, a fairly uh, radical reform, mm -hmm. uh, and this is something that we fully support with India. Mm -hmm. I would, however, like the reform to be defined, what exactly we mean, how we see representation in the Security Council, what the role of the General Assembly should be, how we democratize decision making mm -hmm. and how we ensure regional representativity. Mm -hmm. So I would want a more defined debate. I think at the moment it's at the level of rhetoric. Mm -hmm. It's not quite uh, a concrete discussion mm -hmm. on clear outcomes that we've all uh, stipulated. So we would like to move toward even a draft text mm -hmm. so that we know what are we all talking about and is there commonality of thinking yeah. or are we very far apart? And, and do you back India's uh, permanent position at the United Nations Security Council? Well, I think a country of the size and power of India should be represented. Uh, but there are African countries that should have representation as well. And I'm sure we all share that, uh, uh, that belief with our colleagues here in India. Ma'am, uh, now moving to a domestic uh, focus. Uh, South Africa recently was put on the grey list of the FATF. Mm -hmm. Your reaction to this development? Well, of course, we are uh, we're very concerned. We had been alerted uh, uh, to this likelihood uh, oh, some time ago, and we began uh, to look at our financial uh, institutions and particularly the uh, co concerns about uh, uh, likely uh, money laundering uh, failures that were not sufficiently uh, exercising oversight uh, on uh, institutions that are utilized either mm -hmm. uh, for funding of terrorism activities or money laundering. We've had unfortunately several years of a great deal of corruption in South Africa. Mm -hmm. It's something our government has been battling mm -hmm. uh, but it is clear uh, from the alert from FATF mm -hmm. uh, that we need to do much more. Mm -hmm. uh, we have passed the necessary legislation and we're now looking at further steps so that we satisfy uh, uh, the requirements of this financial uh, authority. We believe we should come out of the grey listing uh, and we're going to work hard to address all the areas of inadequacy. Ma'am, mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned about corruption. This has been an issue in your country. There have been power shortages as well. Do you think that this will prevent the investors to invest in your country? That can impact your economy? Well, I, I think uh, we've done rather well in the past four years on foreign direct investment because President Ramaphosa has been categoric mm. in his fight against corruption. Mm. Uh, he has strengthened all prosecutorial institutions, uh, has set up mechanisms against corruption, and people are on trial and they will go to prison uh, if they've committed uh, any criminal act. So we are acting against corruption and I think investors can see that action is being taken. 
On the power shortages, this is a very worrying uh, situation. Steps again are being taken. So it's not as though government is just sitting back and watching you know, things happen. Uh, we have increased uh, the power supply and we will do uh, even more. The president announced uh, a range of steps uh, in his address to the nation earlier this year. Mm. So uh, we are acting, uh, we're not standing still. South Africa is on the move and we will address all the challenges confronting our country. Mm. My last question, uh, there has been some kind of advisory by the US mission saying that people should be prepared for any eventuality when it comes to 72 hours, some kind of deadline that ha has been issued keep the perishable food with you. How do you see such kind of advisory coming from the US side? I find it very odd. I, I was surprised by it. But, uh, you know, uh, just uh, four or five weeks ago, the United States uh, issued another advisory that there's a terrorist attack pending in South Africa. Nothing happened. Mm -hmm. uh, but I suppose they have a duty when they become worried about something, uh, you know, to alert uh, their citizens. What we find odd is before issuing such statements, a country that we regard as a friendly country does not speak to the government. They just issue these statements and cause everybody to be anxious. Then nothing happens. So, you know, it's almost become like uh, the boy who cries wolf. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's rather an unfortunate uh, uh, situation, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, while I've run out of my questions, but I'd still like to ask one Another question, that's about India and its engagement with Africa. Uh, where do you see India provided vaccines to the continent, to your country? And you praised India uh, just a short while ago. So how do you see India's engagement going forward with the continent and what India can bring to the table when it comes to capacity building on the continent? Well, um, let me say uh, again uh, that we were extremely uh, grateful for the support that India gave to the continent. Uh, and uh, India was a friend in very difficult times. But uh, <coughs> what is important for Africa, and my own uh, perspective, is Africa mustn't be a recipient all the time. And so uh, we have insisted that we would want Africa to develop the ability to produce uh, vaccines. And we've offered to our friends the hand of partnership in such an endeavor. Mm -hmm. So we would like uh, India with its wonderful pharmaceutical companies to establish plants on the African continent mm. so that we become a producer as well mm. and we partner with India uh, in such a, a, an end of an enterprise. Mm. Well, thank you so much, ma'am, for speaking uh, to Vion. It was a pleasure speaking to you on a range of subjects. Thank mm. you so much, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you very much.